Hi, I'm your host, Shaw Hayes, and I would like to welcome you on another episode of Let's Talk Film, a film review series for women which allows their contemporary voices to be heard on all types of film releases. Today, we will be reviewing the science fiction thriller, Gravity, written by Jonas and Alfonso Cuaron and directed by Alfonso Cuaron. We are shooting here at the literary theme Emerson Bar. It is located on Myrtle Avenue between Classen Avenue and Emerson Place in the Clinton Hill neighborhood of Brooklyn. This community along Myrtle Avenue has evolved into a thriving hotspot for diverse local businesses, restaurants, and bars. And with Pratt Institute, the prestigious art institution located nearby, the Emerson Bar has developed a local following with artists, designers, and everyone alike. Let's go in and discover why. We're here now with the owner, the co-owner of the Emerson here in Brooklyn. Gina, tell me a lot about what this area and the atmosphere of the area is and the clientele that you normally have here at the bar. Well, we've been here for about three years and we're very close to Pratt Institute. So we have a lot of students, artists coming in. Also, uh, just a good diverse crowd of neighborhood people. And I see that did you have a lot of artwork of it. Was any locals who painted a lot of pieces up on the wall? Uh, we're actually a gallery and we feature different artists about every two months. Uh, we exhibit regulars who are artists, Pratt grads, and they're able to sell their work. We don't take any commission, so the artist gets all the money if they oh, wow, that's sell amazing. anything. And I also see that you have a garden here, which is unusual for a bar that doesn't have an, uh, a kitchen here. So tell us about the garden and how do you utilize that in your drinks here? Well, the garden, we, we grow fresh mint, we have rosemary, we have a tree back there. Uh, it's a Chinese plum tree. And in the fall, we get really nice plums. So. This past fall, I made a plum puree. We had a special cocktail, seasonal cocktail that we did for about two weeks. Our most popular drink, the Emerson, uh, which uses mint. Wow. We we grow mint in the backyard, so you know we have fresh mint for every cocktail that we. So, in terms of your drinks and specials that you offer, do you have a happy hour, and how often do you have the happy hour? We have daily happy hour from open until 7.30, which includes $2 off all 12 of our drafts, two for one well drinks, and then also every day we have, um, well every night we have a special, which usually, for example, we have $5 margaritas every Friday, two for one whiskey tequila drinks every Thursday, mm -hmm. ladies night Saturday. Wow. Good place to come and have a yeah. good time to hang out and have a good cocktail. Yeah, a lot, like, a lot of people have their birthday parties here. It's a great space for that. And I see your board games, which I love places who take it back to the original way to have fun, which are with board games and, and things of that nature, and even pool tables. So that makes it a really nice atmosphere to come to. Yeah, the pool table is pretty popular. Every Tuesday I do a pool tournament at 9 o'clock. Anybody can play any skill level. It's $5.00. Winner takes the pot. Oh, wow. Uh, we also <laughs> good for a college student, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, to, good to have such money in your pocket for a college student. Well, I thank you so much for allowing us to be here at the Emerson. It's an amazing place. I definitely want to come back and, and enjoy the atmosphere, especially being in Brooklyn, the heart of Brooklyn, where it is. I uh, thank pleasure. you very much. Thank, thank you. you. I'm here with Sophia. Hi, Hi Sophia. How are you? I'm good. Sophia is a filmmaker and journalist based in New York City. She's a commentator for CNN's Erin Burnett Out Front and a graduate of New York University's MFA in film program. Today, we will be reviewing the science fiction thriller Gravity, written by Jonas and Alfonso Cuaron, directed by Alfonso Cuaron. Do you think the film Gravity is destined to become a classic? Why or why not? Well, I saw someone say something like it was a sci-fi film. I didn't feel like it was a sci-fi film. I felt like it was like it was an described film. as that. Yeah, yeah it was. It. There weren't any aliens. No, I like saw the same thing because the description of it stated yeah. it was sci-fi. I'm like, well, that's not sci-fi. Yeah, I think it was just like one of those, you know, survival films. Right. Um, and so I think to me it was a classic. To me, the reason it was a classic because the story was just perfect. Like mm -hmm. it had the physical aspects of it. You know, it was constantly just visual, visual, visual. But the emotional ties that you felt. I mean, I could certainly connect to people that I'll never have a job as an astronaut. Right. But I. Could <laughs> could connect with what she was going through every single beat along the way. It was a roller coaster ride. 
Well, when I think of classics, and I guess because I have a, a standard or a bar when it comes down to movies like this, like The Life of Pies or The Castaways, right. where the lone survivor has to go through all, all these obstacles to get to the other side. And when you get those kind of stories and they pull in your heartstrings and pull in your emotion, and, you know, there was a, a constant things that were happening, you know, with the debris falling and this and this and that going throughout the storyline. But I felt like if I had captured some part, even if they did flashbacks, I would have been happy with that, just to see just her thoughts. I mean, you know, when they did certain dream sequences or one little dream she had. But I, I needed something that would have taken me to her life prior to her getting there, what built her up to wanting to dive so far. I mean, granted, she told us, but what built her up diving so much into her work that made her wanted to go and, you know, turn her life into to that. Alfonso Cuaron is the first director since James Cameron in Avatar to effectively employ 3D technology in live action movies. What were your thoughts on the use of the 3D effect on this film? Sure, the 3D effect on the film made you feel like you were in outer space. Mm -hmm. And in order to have this experience fully just kind of wrap around you, I mean, he, he wanted it to be an IMAX film. It felt like an IMAX it film. It did. Mm -hmm. And the 3D, I don't even like 3D that much. Me neither. I don't even, I don't even care. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Like, why pay that shit back? Whatever. But this time I was like, oh, wait a minute. Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, especially when the whole debris thing. Like yeah. to me, when every time something flung towards the screen, I'm blinking like, yeah. oh, like it's really coming towards yeah, yeah. me. Even my husband like grabbed out for the screw when the screw. Came. He's like, I was like, it's not there. The little screw like floating at you. Oh, it's really coming. He's at me. like, I was it like, it's not there. <laughs> He's like the big kid. But like you said, 3Ds are. I, I love when 3D is properly placed. Yeah. Like I hate when it's just 3D when a bird just comes yeah, towards you, and that's it. and that's yeah. the end of the 3D aspects <laughs> exactly. of it. In this movie, this type of movie, it's properly placed. It's, it's needed because yeah. it does really take you there. You really feel like you're in that moment with her, out of space, and when she's falling and yeah. something's happening or something's right. coming towards her, you feel it. And like I said, you should not watch this movie unless you're watching yes. it in three days. Yes, so. like, I don't even know why they have theaters that offer it. <laughs> right. Do not, don't rip this phone right. offline why? You, you are a techie person for that. <laughs> you, you are a techie for that. You should <laughs> not want to go see it any other way. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate that. Do you think that Sandra Bullock's character in this film, um, who she plays Dr. Weinstone and Sigourney Weaver's character Ripley in the film, Alien, share similarities? Um, I, don't, I don't see the similarities. Mm -hmm. I think that her character is very much not equipped for what happened. She's, mm -hmm. you know, sort of she's gone through the training and all that but she doesn't really she wasn't really ready for this mm -hmm. and so she completely is not that's what I kind of like about her is that she's not this kind of like leather right, wearing right. you know like I fight everything <laughs> and all you know she doesn't like have this sort of you know breast Brassy. chest of armor right. that she just fights you know, she's not She-Ra you know she's like I feel like I completely understand her and she's like oh I should have paid more attention to that like <laughs> class employee thing that they told me to get. and like, manual <laughs> like, that little thing they told about how flying planes yeah it's like and I love that about her I like she's a reluctant hero and I think that's the difference between her character and then you know um, Sigourney Weavers. And when I started seeing certain images of her, it put me in the mind of Sigourney, but it as you go on and you, you see Sandra Bullock's character, they are completely different yeah. because of the fact that you, she was so much brassier and, uh -huh. and you know, you, you, you felt like, you know, she was about to take on the world yeah. and you would, if she was a person that was charged, leading the charge, you were right behind right. her, whereas uh, Sandra's character was more timid. She was more like, I don't know. And apologetic. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, I mean, she, you know, was not more like, I did what I did and I'm fine with it. So that's why I'm kind of like, now I started, when I saw an image of her, it made me think of that about Sigourney, but I, as the storyline went on, I was like, yeah, that's it. The outfits, that's as far as it goes. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the evolution of women in these type of films, which is considered a science fiction? I think that for a long time, women were just not in science fiction. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at kind of the, the Frankenstein era of sci-fi, mm -hmm. I don't really remember women being a part of that world. Right. And I think that they're showing her as a scientist. Like, right. this isn't just, you know, she's not running from anything. Like, mm -hmm. there's no, like... The damsel in distress. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's <laughs> going to be saved. You know, that's not it. Um, it's just, I think that what it comes down to is to see a woman who is a scientist is so helpful. Right. Young know, girls to women, even if you're not going to go into the sciences, it's the idea that that's an option for you. Right. So I feel like her character is... You know exactly where we need to be right now in terms of the evolution. Mm -hmm. We're encouraging young women as well as men to recognize that women have a place in the sciences. And and just seeing her character being able to overcome. I mean, of course, there is always going to be that that time when you feel vulnerable because you're you're in space. I mean, yeah. it's not like you're in like a car yeah. crash. Yeah. So it's just being able to see women not being having to wait for somebody to rescue them. Right. They're coming to figure out like we have the brains too. Mm -hmm. We got here. We're equally on the same footing because obviously we did something to kind of right. get in the same place. So it really is helpful to see that, to be able to see that there are women 
out there that that really out there in the world who have flown out of space successfully, who've done research and and have come back. So that's one of the things that makes me proud to see um, women in those kind yeah, of films. And also, she isn't confident. Like I right. kind of like that. I think right. the whole time she's kind of like, oh, I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> right. I think that's the best part about it is that she's not, she isn't brazen and right. like, she's like, okay, let me calm myself. I got to figure this out. Like she acts like I would act. In a right, situation. right. Like, like it's like I this. I would still make it out, but I would still be like, oh. Right. Please, please, please. Like, I would definitely be like that. So, like she did the part like any mean yeah, uh, any, like, oh. I love that about her. Yeah. I know that she's not incredibly confident. I think that she, it's better. She's better as a reluctant hero. Yeah. But what do you feel are some of the weaknesses and strengths of the film? That was the only thing is the connection to the other people. Right. Um, we hear the voices of the other astronauts. We hear stories of their lives beforehand, but there's not like any trace of them. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the only, that is the only thing. I will right. see that that is there. I think outside of that, um, I think the pace is amazing. The pace is just really yeah, clean. Yeah, it kept you going yeah. the whole time. And he doesn't let one element, the sound, the visual, mm -hmm. the every, everything. It's like the sound gives you this feeling of what she, it, the, the perspective. Mm -hmm. You constantly are either in her perspective or an outer space perspective. It's like he, he knows where to take you in terms of perspective so that you experience right. it. Right. And the only part that I was missing, like you said, was this the backstory. Story, right. Yeah. And, and, I, and I've said it before, is the backstory is part of what I think was one of the weaknesses of the film. But the elements of constant something happening you know at first when it started i felt that it, it kind of started a little flat because it was just kind of like the conversation but as i go back to the buildup of it all i could see why that was needed yeah, that's so and it, but like i said there was constantly something happening so that kept you on the edge of your seat right. that made you go oh what's happening next so i feel that part of it but that little maybe just a couple flashbacks would have been thrown in there for me would have kind of like solidified this and probably put that in that classic category for me what were your thoughts on the director directing of the film? As we stated before, um, Afonso Cuaron, um, past films included Children of Men, Harry Potter, and Prisons of Azabon, and um, A2, A2 Mama Tambien. So what do you think of his directing skills in this film? Sure, he's one of my favorite directors mm -hmm. um, of all time. I was sold after Children of Men. Mm -hmm. um, Itu Mama Tambien is also a strong film. It's a really, it's a beautiful film, it's a classic film. The main thing about him is that he, understands people he mm -hmm. understands why people do what they do he also understands why different people why why people do come to the same point from different ways mm -hmm. right? and so i think that's what he was able to show in this film right. is because you know she's not a person who is living for the same thing that everyone else is mm -hmm. living for and that alone tells me that you know the script writing is amazing right there but also he understands how someone in, the, in that situation how would they fight for life i think the best thing about him as a male director mm -hmm. he doesn't see her as a sex object right that's one thing i must say yeah. like even in children of men and all that like he always sees women and children of men the main character, the woman who's going to save humanity, is a black woman. Mm -hmm. But he, as a male director, has ultimate respect for the way that he portrays women, he, the way he portrays the, the female form. Mm -hmm. He sees it as really a thing of beauty and not something that he is going Sexualized, to Sexualize, yeah. That's pretty rare. And, <laughs> and, and, I mean, and without giving anything away, but there was a part in the film where there was like a, a, a metaphor type of the style fetal of film. Position. Fetal yeah. position. Yeah. Yes. Gorgeous. Embryotic. Moment. I just, and then when yeah. you think about how it all, the, the, the part of the ending, it just was like, it all came full circle and I just was like in awe of that like that was just yeah. just like yes this man knows what he's doing I think it's everyone's all like <laughs> as we top three things your favorite things in this film yes. and, and he let it last he yes. let it last he didn't cut yes. away and it's like he under, he is like he a, wanted the a, audience yeah, to capture it yeah. yeah he's like a conductor he yeah. knows when to play the fast parts and the slow parts but he understands how to keep he understands that emotions are not quick paced always mm -hmm. and I think that's something that a lot of Hollywood films mm -hmm. or Hollywood directors don't get he gets it well that's the layering it. of it because he, he needed to add that aspect of it to add more layer and more depth to the mm -hmm. story because when you're dealing with a lone survivor you need those elements right. to kind of add a little layer to it so mm -hmm. so who do you think should go see this film and who do you think will go see this film well first women should see this film mm -hmm. i think it's one of the first, i mean women girls old young all of that it's very much in tune with many women's you know emotional psychology mm -hmm. and in a space that usually our emotional psychology is not tested i think you know anyone who is adventurous who's courageous anyone who wants to kind of escape their boring normal life, life um and go, <laughs> and go someplace you're not gonna be going anytime soon <laughs> it's definitely a family film women should not miss this film That's yes most i important. agree but i think it's definitely it's it's universal it's um, a frontier that many people, you know, we all look up to the outer space in the middle of the night, like mm -hmm. wonder what's out there, and this film answers that question. So, and I think, um, although it was classified as a sci-fi film, I mean, you have your sci-fi buffs who, you know, would probably love to go see this film. But anyone who loves a great adventure, who loves a story yeah. about survival and just being able to just overcome obstacles, it does that kind of story because it does offer you that. 
you know, like you said about women being able to see. And I think anybody who really, you know, thinks about struggles in life, you know, just take themselves to this film and, and maybe feel a little bit better, a sense about, a hope about, you know, a bigger tomorrow. So I think that's the kind of film where you need to kind of see so that you can connect to that kind of story for yourself. Yeah, women have to see this film. Yeah. Because of what you just said. You know, although we're never going to just have this aspect of being mm -hmm. in outer space, but just making yourself say, you can do it. Like, yeah. you can get past all the things that ha happened yesterday or today. You, know, you can do it. Because, like I say all the time, I'm a reminder of myself that how powerful we are. You know, so I, I love that aspect of it. And anybody who needs a reminder of that should go yeah. see this film. Well, we've run out of time, but I want to thank Sophia for being here. And thank you for your comments and thoughts today. It's been a pleasure having you with us today. I would also like to thank Gina Jankowski for allowing us to shoot here today at the Emerson Bar. Again, today we're discussing Gravity written by Jonas and Alfonso Cuaron, directed by Alfonso Cuaron. Be sure to check this out and more on our website online at www.letstalkfilm.com, which is also available on your mobile devices. I'm today's host, Shaw Hayes, and until next time, keep watching and keep talking film.